Hello. Hi. 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 I'm Yasmin, Woo. and I'm an engineer. Woo. So I googled engineer when I was preparing for this, <laughs> and this is what I found. Not that. <laughs> Not that either. This. Uh, this is what Google thinks engineers should look like. Right? <laughs> Uh, and Google also thinks engineers look like this. <laughs> so in an attempt to fit in with my colleagues, I've got myself a hard hat and I've started growing a beard. <laughs> I'm here tonight to talk to you about my engineering passion. Kim Kardashian's bomb. <laughs> Stick with me there. Now, this is a feat of structural engineering, <laughs> but I don't actually rate it that highly, but it still somehow seems to fill, literally, our TV screens and our computer screens. <laughs> so my actual engineering mission, and my passion, is to get more engineering in the media. This is probably not very sexy, but I'm sure you'll agree it's a noble and practical cause. <laughs> About this time last year, I was working in oil and gas, and I was mm. thinking to my... <laughs> hey! um, so I was working in oil and gas, and I was thinking to myself, I'm a little bit sick of this, so well done to the person who booed. <laughs> um, and I thought, wouldn't it be great to be made redundant? <laughs> I mean, what's better than not having any money having nothing to do, and watching Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> so, I made a couple of phone calls, and I pulled a few strings, and I got hold of the Saudi oil minister. And I told him about my predicament. And I said, why don't we flood the market with excess barrels of oil, drive down the price of oil, and just cause the collapse of the industry. That might help me out. <laughs> Let's keep it to ourselves. Let's not tell anyone about this. <laughs> so that happened, and that led to exactly what I intended to happen. And my company started making cuts, and I was made redundant, and I now work in district heating. <laughs> So there was a little period of time between my oil and gas and my district heating job. And in that time, I did a placement at the BBC. Mm -hmm. Woo! I worked for the BBC Science Unit on some of their science radio programs. Does that, do, do you remember radio? <laughs> <laughs> you don't ask your parents. And in keeping with the theme of this evening, you could ask Emma or Preeti's dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so while I was at the BBC, this was an unpaid placement, by the way, uh, not because I'm charitable, but because that was the most amount of money they were willing to give me. <laughs> uh, clearly the TV license isn't high enough. <laughs> so while I was there, my mission was to crowbar in as much engineering as possible. Woo! This turned out to be a lot easier said than done. Oh. <laughs> Do you want me to talk to them? <laughs> So this was a lot easier said than done. Uh, it turns out the folks at the BBC love animals, they love space, and they love celebrity death. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond that, it was quite difficult to capture their imagination. <laughs> so I racked my brain, and I scoured the world wide web. <laughs> searching for an exciting engineering story and eventually I found something pretty amazing the world's largest cryogenic energy storage facility being commissioned right now as we speak in Pillsworth near Manchester so to fill you in cryogenic energy storage is a potential solution to the energy storage conundrum um, and how it works is when you have excess energy from renewables or when electricity is cheap, 
you can use that to liquefy air. And you take that liquid air and you store it in like a giant thermos flask. And when you need that energy back, you can uh, warm, it, warm the air back again, warm the air up again, <laughs> uh, causing it to expand by about 700 times. And you can use that expansion to drive a turbine uh, to generate electricity. It's pretty amazing stuff. But wait, it gets better. <laughs> uh, this particular storage facility is on a landfill site. Uh, and it's next to some gas engines that burn gas from decomposing rubbish. And the cryogenic storage process uses the waste heat from those engines to make the warming up of the air more environmentally efficient. <laughs> it blew my mind. <laughs> I thought the world needs to know about this. Um, at this point, I have to say, Kim Kardashian's bomb, move aside. This is as glamorous as it gets. <laughs> so I spent the next few weeks uh, researching, writing, editing. Uh, I even visited the facility uh, to capture the true atmosphere of the place. <laughs> and also to uh, interview engineers in their natural habitat. <laughs> and after a lot of blood, sweat, tears and editing, I had created a masterpiece. It was amazing and I couldn't wait for the rest of the world to hear it. So I sent it off to the producer and I waited for him to reply, which he did. And he said, the story isn't sexy enough. Oh. I was devastated. <laughs> I mean, uh, I didn't understand. What does that even mean, not sexy? <laughs> I mean, it had, it had cryogenics. <laughs> it had energy storage. It had a landfill site. <laughs> I thought about it a little bit more, and since when was science radio sexy? <laughs> so my first instinct was to react with violence. <laughs> I managed to calm myself down, and I settled on a different form of revenge, which was to uh, never, ever, ever pay my TV license ever again. <laughs> and then I calmed down properly. And I thought, okay, what would an engineer do in this situation? <laughs> Let me use my training and come up with a logical solution. And I got talking to the BBC online science news editor. And we agreed that I would write up the story for online, which would, seemed like a good consolation prize at the time. And then I thought about it a little bit more. And I mean, who even listens to the radio these days? <laughs> This way it was going to be preserved in history forever. Um, so at this point I finished the placement and I started my new job in district heating. And some of you might be wondering what the hell is district heating? I'm about to tell you. Uh, instead of you having a boiler in your house, or if you live in London, instead of you having a boiler in your overpriced cardboard box, uh, you have a central source of heat generation. Uh, so a big boiler which generates heat for the whole building or the whole development. And I manage a control room which looks after about 70 of these sites. And that means heating and hot water for 20,000 people. So, yeah, screwing this up would be terrible news. <laughs> Can you imagine thousands of Londoners getting up in the morning to find cold showers. Can you imagine the carnage? <laughs> There's only really one way I can see it ending. London riots round two. <laughs> Destroying the district heating industry. And then I would have to go and get another job back in oil and gas. <laughs> so despite this slightly stressful new job. I spent my spare time writing up this story um, and I eventually finished it and emailed it across to the editor and I spent the next eight weeks 
casually harassing him. <laughs> I emailed a few times every day, <laughs> and I followed this up with phone calls. Uh, still, just no response. Complete radio silence. <laughs> um, and at, at this point, I kind of had enough of this shit and just wanted to move on with my life. Also, I was starting to get worried about ending up with a restraining order. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I'll try one last thing and then just get over it. And I emailed another one of the journalists who I knew there, and he said he might be able to help, but I had completely given up at this point. However, this story does have a happy ending. <laughs> Not that kind of happy ending. <laughs> um, one Saturday morning, I woke up and I logged into my computer and went on the BBC News website and there it was. There was my story. <laughs> on, the front page of, on the front page of the BBC News science section. <laughs> so the whole experience was a little bit, a uh, bit of a roller coaster of emotions. Um, Possibly a bit traumatic and will probably affect me for the rest of my life. <laughs> but it hasn't put me off uh, getting engineering stories into the media. And I will continue to do this. And thank you very much for listening to my little story. Oh. <laughs>